Hey guys, Carl here, and today I'm at the airport with my 177 to talk to you about landing lights. And I know that seems a little odd talking to you about something during the day that we use at night, but hear me out, it's really because it all started here. You see, a couple weeks ago, I was doing a pre-flight of the plane and realized that my landing light wasn't working. And I want it working for two main safety reasons. The first is because I fly out of Deer Valley Airport, which is incredibly busy, and anything that increases visibility is a good thing. The second reason is because I wanted to start doing more night flights and I needed it operational for that. Now this is a new to me airplane and I've only been flying it for a few months and I hadn't really thought about what lights I was currently using, but they ended up being these guys, the widely used 4509 halogen bulb. So much like every other aircraft owner out there, I asked myself, should I replace these or get an LED upgrade? I mean, LEDs have longer life, higher efficiency, and are shock and vibration resistant, and they're the way of the future. Well, luckily for you guys, I decided to do both so you can see the difference for yourselves. Now, since I have this guy out, let's talk about it for a little bit. The GE4509 is a 4.5 inch, 100 watt incandescent bulb. Its beam is designed to spread 12 degrees horizontally and 6 degrees vertically. They're relatively inexpensive too, but they're only rated for 25 hours of service. Now, with the working bulbs back in the airplane, I grabbed a buddy and we went for a flight at night. Now a quick disclaimer about nighttime video, cameras need light to work, and when they don't have it, quality suffers, but we'll do our best to show and tell you what we were experiencing. On the taxiway and away from the hangar lights, I realized just how little I could actually see. Slightly obscured by the compass, you can see that the light is focused in this area here, and it loses its projection rather quickly. From the wing, it tells much the same story, acting more like a spotlight because of the position of the camera. After being cleared for takeoff, we kicked on the landing light and pulled onto the runway. It provided a bit of improvement, focusing left of the taxi light. From the wing, you could see it reaching past the taxi light and lighting more of the runway. One thing I did notice was I felt like the yellow hue of the lights made it harder to see, almost like the darkness was absorbing it. After flying around the city for a bit and enjoying its beautiful lights, we came back to the airport to land. From the wing, we can see the lights starting to lighten the path well before the runway. But in the cockpit, it didn't seem like the lights were on at all until just before the runway. Honestly, I expected to see them sooner, but overall, we could see well enough to safely taxi, take off, and land. Now before we switch out the lights, I wanted to do one more set of tests. So we parked the plane in the darkest corner of the airport that we could find and set up some cones. The idea here is to see how well the lights can cast their light at different distances. We placed cones at 25, 50, and 100 feet and tested them with the taxi light on and then added the landing light. At 25 feet, you can hardly tell I turned any lights on. This is because the light spread has such a narrow field and you can't even tell when I turn the landing light on. At 50 feet, you can see the taxi light turn on, but again, there's still no measurable difference with the landing light. At 100 feet, we're completely in the taxi light projection field, but still missing that landing light. Looking out past 100 feet, you can see that the landing light is aimed to the left of the taxi, which is why we weren't seeing much of it in the other tests with the cones. But both lights do carry out past 100 feet, dissipating quickly, making it hard to see much further than this from the cockpit. Now I know I've been talking about the light's projection field, and I want to put this into perspective, so we pointed the plane at a hangar and turned them on. You can really see how focused the light is and how left the landing light is aimed. Now, small visibility improvements could be made if we aim the lights better, but if the lights were on the front cowling, it would really give them the best case scenario. Now with those results, we put the plane away and we're ready to upgrade our lights to LEDs. There are a lot of options on the market, but we went with the Sunspot 36, 4313, and 14HX from Aero LEDs. There's a lot about them that we like. They have one of the highest outputs on the market at 11,000 lumens and are rated for 30,000 hours of use. They're a true drop-in replacement too, so we were able to upgrade them ourselves. They also have a white light that makes everything easier to see, and when you add that to the taxi light's 40 degrees of light spread, we should be able to see things a lot better on the ground. The landing light has similar base specifications and offers 20 degrees of spread, which should light up the runway way before our old lights did. Hopping back in the plane, the moment we turned the taxi light on, there was a noticeable difference, and we were still around the street and hangar lights. Moving to the taxiway, the taxi light's 40 degrees of spread made a huge difference. 
From the wing, you can see how far out and how wide it's really reaching, completely eliminating the spotting we had before and improving our visibility tremendously. When we flipped on the landing lights for takeoff, visibility got even better, and we could see the light being projected down the runway, allowing us to see way further than we ever could have with the other lights. This is because of the landing lights 20 degrees of vertical and horizontal light spread. After flying roughly the same route we did before over the city, we came back to land. And let me tell you, there was a huge difference here too. The new lights allowed us to see the ground and runway way before landing. This is a game changer for me, and overall, visibility was greatly improved, which increased safety in taxi, takeoff, and landings. Now just like before, we went back to the dark corner of the airport and set up the cones to put the lights to the same tests. And just in case you're wondering, we kept the camera settings identical between the tests to provide a true comparison. And it's no comparison. Starting at 25 feet, we have a noticeable change because the taxi light is actually hitting the cone. And we can tell when the landing light is added. At 50 feet, we're in full view of the taxi light, and man is it bright. So much so, you can hardly tell when we turn on the landing light, which adds some viewing distance past the cone, but it's not as noticeable on camera. Last, at 100 feet, the taxi light is just as bright as it was at 50, and when we add the landing light, you can see the pavement around the cone get brighter. Looking out past 100 feet with the taxi light, you can see we're fairly well lit, but the light is starting to fade out in the distance until we turn on the landing light. Then we can see all the way to the taxiway, which is over 350 feet away. Now for the last test up against the hangar. Turning the taxi light on, you can see the entire hangar is lit with no focus spotting. Now, when we add the landing light, it's a bit more concentrated, but that's because it's designed to project further out. Overall, this is a significant difference over our old lights. All in, the upgrade was totally worth it, and 10 out of 10, I would do it again. The Aero LED Sunspot 36 lights were so good that I didn't realize how bad my old lights really were. And if I had an airplane with the existing LEDs, I'd upgrade them to Aero LEDs as well, because they've been outpacing the competition in price per watt, performance, and quality, which makes flying at night much safer.